Hey y'all! Well, we're going to talk tape head preamps. And you might say, what's a tape head preamp? And basically, tape decks normally have the electronics that's inside this box inside the tape unit itself. And the tape unit has a line level out that goes into your amplifier. The problem is, or at least the problem that I'm trying to solve, is that most of the tape decks that are sold in the U.S. are NAB only. And all of these new high-end, really fabulous sounding tapes are two-track, which means it's a special deck that just has two channels. It's not a four-track two-channel. It's a two-track two-channel. And that it's 15 IPS. And the standard consumer decks are seven and a half IPS at their highest. And most of them are four track. And then most of them are NAB. And there's a few select models that are two track decks, but it's really rare to find one in the US that is IEC EQ, which is the European version of equalization for tapes. And the NAB standard was created when the tape formulations weren't really great. And so they were trying to overcome the issues that some of those early magnetic tapes had. And then as the tape formulations got better, it was able to use this IEC EQ, which I think records more dynamic range and it's more kind of a natural EQ than the NAB was. But in the U.S., they just like, you know what? We're using this, I think it was National American Broadcasting is what it stands for. It's like, we're using that. We've got all these old tapes that recorded to that standard. We're not changing. All these modern high-end tapes that are for sale all record at IEC because it's higher fidelity. And so the problem then becomes, where do I get one of these machines that'll work with that? And you either have to try to find one from Europe that has that EQ inside the tape unit itself and or have it converted or find a super high-end model that has both, which is pretty rare. And one of the decks that was probably a game changer in the whole recording studio industry was when TAC came out with its Tascam line of decks. And the Tascam was at a much lower price point than like the Studers and, you know, the Revoxes and all these decks that were super expensive, really good decks, you know, or the Ampex machines. And they made studio recordings obtainable from folks at a price point that you know brought a lot more people into the game and there's a ton of these Tascam decks out there and the one that I've worked with there's a Tascam 22 I think it's a 22-2 that uses the 7 inch reels and then the Tascam 32 which is their 10 and a half inch reel deck that's a two track so the key things that you need to play in this game is you need a two-track deck and it needs to be 15 IPS. And the Tascam has that. Now the one I have, the electronics in it, there's something wrong. They, it doesn't sound right. The little Tascam 22s, I've restored about three of those now and they all sounded great. But this 32, just there's something wonky with the EQ on both the record and on the playback boards. And it's a pretty complicated machine and it's got, man, it's got all these potentiometers for adjusting the EQs on both the record and the playback side. And it's got a really complex, you know, thing for, that's why I bought this little voltage meter thing over here was to be able to try to calibrate one of these decks. And in the future, I'm gonna go down that rabbit hole. But for now, I thought to myself, it's like, why don't I just get some tape head out jacks, like 
get the shielded wire where it plugs into the board, hook it up to an RCA jack on the back of the tape deck, and pull the signal straight out of the tape heads and get a tape head preamp that's already set for NAB, IEC 7.5, and IEC 15. And that's what this Earnhardt Audio tape head preamp does. And they're one of the few people that are making one right now. And the other thing that was nice about it is, especially when I'm just starting to experiment with this stuff, it's got a gain knob, and it's also got adjustments at the different frequencies, so I can play around with all that stuff and try to see if I can get something that sounds good. So one of the things that I'm starting to learn as well is that the tape heads don't have a standard output level because they didn't need to because the tape machine was designed around whatever tape head they chose to use so if this one puts out you know four millivolts they would design the preamp around that tape heads output and then have that going to line out. If the tape head makes 0.1 volts output or it's a 2 millivolt output, same deal. They would just, okay, here's the output of the tape head. We need line out. They would design the preamp around that. When you're using a tape head preamp, you're having to deal with whatever the head is in the tape deck. And there's no real standard to any of that stuff. And so I'm finding out that I'm probably going to have to use a step-up transformer similar to what you would do with an MC Phono cartridge with my tape deck to get the gain high enough to feed this preamp. And so I've been playing around with that a little bit. I haven't finalized anything enough where I want to like say, hey, here's what you need to do. Obviously, at the end of this video series, we'll be doing all that. We'll be talking about, like, here's how you make this Tascam 32, you know, really sing. So one of the reasons that I spent the money and bought this commercial tape head preamp was I need a standard. I need something that I can say, okay, I know this tape head and this tape machine coming into a tape head preamp can sound good and to figure out the whole gain needed and all that kind of stuff because my goal with this is to have a video thing about here you can go buy this Tascam 32 which you can buy them for I think I paid $500 for mine or $600 for it shipped and it wasn't in bad shape the main thing to do is make sure that the heads aren't worn out and the heads look like they were in good shape but again the playback electronics are whacked out. Doesn't matter. We're not doing that. And again, in the future, I'm probably going to have to figure out how to fix the record board and all that stuff. We'll do that in some future video. But for now, I'm just trying to get it to play these really good tapes that Acoustic Sounds is selling right now. Because I've heard them and they sound unbelievable on a really nice, like a Studer deck that my friend has. So once I get this all figured out, the next thing I want to do is I'm modifying a little Rants 7 board that is similar. It's actually the same company that makes those EAR 834 boards. But this is a Marantz 7 preamp that's RIAA. And we're going to modify it to instead of having an RIAA EQ, we're going to have IC EQ. And I'm not going to take credit for figuring this out. I'll link the video below. This Fox something. Yeah, I'll link it below. His YouTube channel, he's got a couple of video series on how to do this. And he uses this specific board because all of the EQs done in the negative feedback loop, the EAR board won't work. And so I've got one of these pretty much built. I got a few parts ordered. I got to fab up a chassis for it, but I want to see if I can do an all tube tape head preamp that has ICEQ on the cheap. And then hook this up to 
my Tascam deck and try to figure out the synergy between all of that and see if it's possible to come up with something maybe, you know, $1,000 in parts all in that you can have a really nice sounding two track 15 IPS IEC tape deck. And so that's what this video series is going to be about is heading down that rabbit hole and probably going to have a pretty small audience. I don't think there's a lot of people that are into this. If you ever heard one of these tapes played on one of the machine like that, yeah, it's, it'll ruin you. Hold on to your 401k because it sounds so good. That's all you'll want to listen to. But anyway, hope some of you find this interesting. I appreciate Holger at Earnhardt Audio building this for me. He, you know, I did, I did buy it retail. I wasn't going to ask him to do me some deal or do it for a channel review or whatever. And so, yeah, it's going to be a total honest review because I paid retail for this guy. And if it doesn't work out and this does or whatever, we're just going to tell it like it is. But so far, this sounds really nice. And I haven't got it dialed in yet, but I think we're getting close. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video. The next video, I'll show you how to modify the Tascam 32 to do the tape head out. It's easier than you think. And there's only a couple of little things you probably got to tune up on the deck. Go ahead and buy a new belt. It just has one belt. And while you're in there, you might as well put a new belt in it. And then you're basically bypassing all the internal electronics. So as long as the motor runs right, it's the right speed, and, you know, the all the push button controls work you know what i mean it starts and stops and you know the, the heads move whether you know back and forth like they're supposed to and all that stuff into the tape path if all that stuff's working then whether the playback boards or whatever work doesn't matter so anyway that's it for this video hope you're enjoying this content if you are please subscribe to the channel please like the video Thanks to all you Patreon supporters, other folks that support the channel in other ways. And until the next video, have a nice day.